Good morning. Welcome to First Congregational Church of Ithaca, a church which is located on the traditional homelands of the Cayuga Nation of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. Welcome to you, if you are female or male, or a little bit of each. Brown or black or white or some of each. Young or old or a blend of both. Rich or poor or a little bit of each. Doubting or believing or a little bit of each. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome in this community. Before we call ourselves to worship, I have several, actually more than a several, announcements. First, welcome to today's guest minister, Rev. Reverend Felicity Wright, who always has something interesting to say to us. <laughs> a reminder, the United Church of Christ's General Synod begins on July 11th. Read a bit about it in the Highland Highlights. The Caring Survey is now up on the church's website, and we do have a few paper copies on the table at the back where the bulletins are, if you want that. The survey is designed to check in on people and see how we're doing as we emerge from the pandemic and see how we can continue to meet your caring needs. So thank you if you choose to do this. You should have received the email from the church office with an updated reopening plan for our church, and, and that's supposed to begin next Sunday. And please read the reopening letter for more information on that. We will have the balcony reserved and the library reserved for those who wish to maintain COVID restrictions. From the Outreach Action Group, there's two things. This month, July, we always support Christmas in July. Each year, we join other UCC congregations in the nation to support active and retired clergy and lay employees of the UCC. Again, read more about that in the highlights. If you choose to contribute by check, mail it to the church office, attendant, attention Mary Ellen Stewart, or you can make a gift on the church's website. For those of you who do veggies, the Outreach Food Hub will be in operation again this summer, starting July 18th. And there will be a cooler outside the front entrance from 9 to noon on Sundays. So please consider donating your extra produce, uh, and that helps improve community access to fresh food for everybody. Beginning in mid-July, that's this month, we will be launching a community read of Valerie Kaur's book, See No Stranger. You've heard David share stories from the book, and Reverend Wright will be referring to it today also. This book was used for our Lenten study as well, so look for more details about it in upcoming emails from the church office. And the last one, if you have not done so already, please consider signing up for the FCCI Listserv, which is described in the Highland Highlights. And now will those who are able please rise for the responsive call to worship. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let, let us, us kneel before, before God, God, our Maker. Maker.
please join in the confession and assurance of grace. The grace of God overflows for us through Jesus Christ, who came into the world to save humanity. Trusting in God's grace, let us pray together. Merciful, Merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. The mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. We are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Amen. And now let's greet each other in the name of Christ. Whatever works here. We can wave at the uh, camera in the back. We can wave to each other. You can touch your screen. Do a virtual hug. Hug. <laughs> May the peace of Christ be with you. seated. This morning's psalm is 146, Praise for God's Help. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations, praise the Lord. The Hebrew scripture is from the book of Job, chapter 29, verses 7 to 17. When I went out to the gate of the city, when I took my seat in the square... The young men saw me and withdrew, and the aged rose up and stood. The nobles refrained from talking and laid their hands on their mouths. The voices of princes were hushed, and their tongues stuck to the roof of their mouths. When the ear heard, it commended me, and when the eye saw, it approved, because I delivered the poor who cried and the orphan who had no helper. The blessing of the wretched came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. 
My justice was like a robe and a turban. I was eyes to the blind and feed to the lame. I was a father to the needy, and I championed the cause of the stranger. I broke the fangs of the unrighteous and made them drop their prey from their teeth. The gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 34 to 40. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me.
Good morning, and thank you, Don. You're welcome. <laughs> and Paul, in a minute. And Sue Ling. And Sue. And dearly beloved Bill. <laughs> and all of you for being here. Oh, and John for being our fabulous tech person, wherever he is. Hi, John. <laughs> uh, and now please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So happy 4th of July. It's always been a special holiday for me. As many of you know, I grew up in Washington, D.C., and have been active in politics from the time I was five. I've managed to make it to most every parade, every inaugural, and many, many demonstrations. We used to meander through the halls of Congress. We we're bored after school. We just go down there. Even knew the secret elevator, not marked, that took us down to the basement where we could get the little trolley that went between the House and the Senate office buildings. Mm. We had lots of visitors because my family had grown up all over the world, and so everybody came to visit us and stay with us. And so we would go down to the White House, 10 minute wait, no reservations. At worst, we had maybe a 15 minute wait. Also went to a public high school in Washington, a third black, a third white, a third everybody else, because <laughs> we were in the embassy district. And growing up, my father's family were Republicans, and my mother's were Democrats. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> and Dinner table conversations were lively. <laughs> uh, but we were taught that the most important thing as an American was to do our research, which meant reading conservative and liberal papers. Later, it would mean Fox and CNN, but this was before then. We knew to treasure free public schools and a free press because they were foundational to our country's greatness. Other countries didn't have that. We started all that. So I grew up grateful for my family, proud for my country. Even the Vietnam War and the civil rights demonstrations and protests didn't change that. I was there for the March on Washington and Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. We were privileged, privileged not just because of who we are or the family. We were privileged to grow up in the greatest country in the history of the world, and we knew it. The 4th of July was especially fabulous. There were parades and picnics and the great fireworks, which we could see from our balcony because we were high up on a hill. We had such a great view that we always had the best parties. People came. There were just lots and lots of people and good food. And everyone proud to be an American, proud to see these great fireworks. Uh, it was only later that I, dis well, I discerned the great wisdom that heaven on earth is when you can feel simultaneously self-indulgent and self-righteous. which we did on the 4th of July. We were self-righteous for the gifts of democracy that we hadn't earned, but we worked to maintain. And we were self-indulgent for the joys of the celebrations. Truly, I was privileged. But I don't feel that way anymore. I see instead the viciousness, the power plays. The January 6th insurrection triggered panic attacks 
and brought me to tears in ways I hadn't for years. And since then, the wanton gun violence and the killing in so many different locations has me, well, extremely anxious for the state of the country and the world. And since I live in the country, not here in downtown liberal Ithaca, I know that some of my neighbors rather enjoy all of the anger that pervades the sound waves. But what I see is a departure from those values that I grew up with and a move instead toward self-righteous viciousness. It has me really worried. I'm trying not to take it personally, but it's hard. I don't think I'm alone. And there are some things coming in my life that I can't not take personally. So a week from today, my son will be married in California. And among other things, I will see the woman who broke apart the marriage and the ex-husband, and we're supposed to do a line dance together. <laughs> so I've got one on either side, the woman who's 12 years younger and always a better music musician and prettier and smarter and all that stuff, and the ex-husband, who's now a woman, we're going to be doing this line dance, and I won't know whether I'm supposed to go left or right or, <laughs> or whatever. But the panic attacks have started big time. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm 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 trying to deal with this, and then when I get back. There's a family reunion of second cousins at my place. Why I offered it, I don't know. But many of them are on the opposite spectrum, uh, opposite side of the spectrum from me politically. So I have to deal with family members who either attack me because I'm either too liberal or not liberal enough, or too conservative, or no one has said I'm not too conservative conservative enough, no. Um, but either I'm too Christian or I'm not the right kind of Christian. And unlike my grandparents who disagreed but respected each other and welcomed the questions and enjoyed the discussions, too many of my cousins just condemn silently. So there's been a power seesaw that seems to be more and more apparent in our lives. Whether it's my family or whether it's the neighborhood or whether it's the country or the world, we're, we're you know, going back up and down between extremists. And about 20 years ago, I realized that Jesus, more than any other religious leader I knew about, was urging us to get off that victim, abuser, power, seesaw, and instead onto the merry-go-round. That in fact, when Jesus talks about the kingdom of God, he's talking about a merry-go-round here on earth where we don't have differentiations of power and abuser and victim or enabler, but that we're in this together, making for a better world. And this realization was a great part of why I felt so good to be, go into ministry. So um, it, it was important. I tried to get my other Christian cousins to understand that. And they tend to think that, well, this is, they tend to be more doctrinaire, dogmatic than I am about what you believe, not how you act. So. 
I've also been reminding myself recently about the techniques of family systems and non-defensive communication. I've been trying to work at these so that I'm ready for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> and at some point, I created a motto for myself, which I call the three A's. Don't attack. Well, here's what too many do. Don't even assume. Instead, ask. But still, I'm tormented by the wanton violence that fills the airwaves. Just three weeks ago, there were four mass shootings in six hours, killing six people and leaving 38 wounded. That's one every 90 minutes. Right now, the news is filled with the apartment collapse in Surfside and the deaths from the horrific weather in the Northwest, so there's less reporting, it seems, on gun violence. But I rather doubt that it's lessening. So, how do we manage it? Chocolate, ice cream, wine, liquor, Xanax, deep breathing, meditation, a long kayak ride, so please reassure me that I'm not the only one dealing with these issues. Oh. Guess not. Thank you, Don. <laughs> so let's get back to basics. What are we going to learn from all this? How are we going to live our lives so that we can be proud of ourselves in spite of all those other idiots out there? And I wonder, what would Jesus do? So I got thinking about the possibilities and also aware that today is July 4th, regardless of how worried I am about my country. And so I found the stole that I'm wearing today. It was one of the few that was red, white, and blue. And that got me thinking, that welcoming the stranger is what has made our country great. It's also what the Bible is all about. It's there in the gospel selection from Matthew. It's all there in how we treat the other, the other who are hungry, thirsty, naked, sick, in prison. How we treat them is how we honor Jesus. And of course, Jesus got his ideas from the Hebrew scriptures. We recognize the importance of hospitality and welcome in the psalm, where the Lord watches over strangers and upholds the orphan and the widow. And we find it again in the message of courage and acceptance in the book of Job. God affirmed Job because Job put on the cloak of righteousness and became eyes for the blind feet for the lame, father to the needy, and champion for the cause of the stranger. Then there's also the famous prayer of St. Francis, which I have on a copy of on my refrigerator when I need it. And just some highlights. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. And then, O oh Master, let me not seek not so much to be consoled as to console, as to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. And now I get it. There is a path for making it through these challenging times. Job, the psalmist, Jesus, St. Francis, all didn't say anything about unity or agreement or having everyone like the same things or vote for the same politicians or even believe in the same ideas of God. The goal was not to be of the same mind, 
but rather to keep an open mind. O oh, Master, let me not seek as much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand. Dear God, help me understand whether or not I agree. For that is the path to peace. Still easier said than done, I know. But I've been privileged to be part of a book group that began right at the beginning of the COVID outbreak. We started reading the Book of Joy by Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama. The last book was recommended by our own beloved Carolyn McPherson up there at the balcony. It was Valerie Kaur's See No Stranger, a memoir and manifesto of revolutionary love. And I know that others of you have been reading that or will be soon. I can't recommend it too highly, especially for today's times. Valerie Kaur grew up in rural California, a descendant of Sikh farmers who had migrated from India in the early 20th century. She went on to get her bachelor degree from Stanford University, a master's in theological studies from Harvard Divinity School, and a law degree from Yale Law School. She was also involved in creating video documentaries right after a family friend was the first person killed in a hate crime after 9-11. Why was he killed? Because he wore a turban. And we all know that people who wear turbans are Muslims. And all Muslims are evil. And all of them want to kill all Americans. So we had better kill them first, right? Attack, assume, when we should ask. And since you're asking, Sikhism is the youngest of the major religions and is the fifth largest in the world. It was first organized in India in the late 15th century, about the time that Christopher Columbus was sailing the ocean blue. Sikhs em emphasize the congruence between spiritual development and everyday moral conduct. And the Sikh idea is Sant Sipathi, Sant Sipathi, the warrior sage. The warrior fights, the sage loves. Translation, the warrior sage fights for love and fights with love. And this is the path of revolutionary love. And on this July 4th, it sounds like an idea that our founding fathers might have proclaimed. Could we perhaps be embarking on a new revolutionary war? The Sikh founder summarized this perspective as, quote, truth is the highest virtue but higher truth, higher still, is truthful living. Again, truth is the higher, highest virtue, but higher still is truthful living. In other words, the emphasis is on practice, not creed. It's the why and the how, not the who and the what. And for me, too many Christians over emphasize creed, we're not alone in this, too many religious people emphasize creed and dogma when they should be looking instead at practices, including with some humility and shame our own. Cor takes us through her own riveting journey as a brown girl growing up in California farmland, finding her place in the world as a young adult galvanized by the murders of Sikhs after 9-11, as a law student fighting injustices in American prisons and at Guantanamo Bay, 
as an activist working with communities recovering from xenophobic attacks, and as a woman trying to heal from her own experiences of sexual assault and police violence. Drawing from the wisdom of sages, scientists, and activists, she reclaims love as an active, public, and revolutionary force that creates new possibilities for ourselves, our communities, and the world. She explores this by looking at how to love others, how to love our enemies, and how to love ourselves, blending practical techniques with personal studies and wisdom from the great teachers, including Jesus. She urges us to see no stranger, but instead look at others and say, you are part of me that I do not yet know. When we start from that place, really a place of wonder, what is it about you that I do not know about myself? When we start from that place of wonder, our world begins to change. So we don't attack, we don't assume, we ask. We learn to ask with genuine wonder. As I was driving here along the slow, winding roads, somehow I got behind this old fart. <laughs> and there was nowhere to pass. And the speed limit's 55, and if he was going 32, I'd be surprised. And I have one of my beloved parishioners from a previous congregation who used to tell me that cars like it when we drive seven miles above the speed limit. <laughs> cars are happy. And if cars are happy, then you know God's happy, right? <laughs> well, here I was going 35 miles under what would make God happy. And I was getting really irritated at this guy. And then I remember, oh, Felicity, practice what you preach. So I'm wondering, is this the fastest his car will go? Is he not well physically or mentally? Or maybe did he lose a child in a car accident? Or a neighbor or a friend? Maybe he is totally clueless and useless or maybe he's human and wounded in some way and doing the best he can. So I'm practicing or trying to practice the gifts of wonder. So I urge you, learn how to ask questions. Learn how to ask questions of yourself as well as others. Practice genuine, non-judgmental questions. Not the, well, why the hell did you do that? <laughs> Linguistically, it's a question, but functionally, it's not. So learn the difference. And, you know, work at it, because in the end, you might actually learn something, change your own assumptions. But even if you don't, you'll help create a kinder, gentler world. You'll sleep better and, and maybe, just maybe, not have to reach for the bottle or the pills or the guns quite so often. So going forward, see no stranger, but instead look at others and say, you are part of me that I do not yet know. Starting from that place of wonder, the world can change and you can be the warrior sage who transforms a relationship, a community, a culture, even a nation. See no stranger, says Valerie Kaur. See no stranger, says the psalmist. See no stranger, says God to Job. See no stranger, says Jesus. See no stranger, says St. Francis. 
See, see no stranger, says the world. See no stranger, says your heart. As we seek to open our hearts to the gifts of revolutionary love, we know that we're not alone. We know that God is there from the beginning to the end of our days. Right next to us in a line dance. I invite you to stand and sing my favorite hymn of all time, Lord of All Hopefulness. be seated. As always, we want to share our joys and concerns with each other. So if you have a prayer for the emailed prayer tree, send it to me, Susan Fast, using the email address which is on page two of your bulletin, and it will be included in the next emailed prayer cares. Also in the next email prayer cares, this is totally off my script, I'm going to include a story that uses the three A's of Felicity. <laughs> You'll see, and, it's, and I'm talking about a stranger, but it's not a person. At the end of this litany prayer, I'm going to invite you to say aloud the name or names of those who are on your heart, all at the same time. And we'll end our prayer time with the Lord's Prayer. And after each of these following short prayers, I'll say, we pray to God, 
and you may respond with, hear us, O God. So let us pray. Gracious God, who loves all and forgets none, we bring to you our prayers for all your children, for all whom we love, watch over, and care for everywhere in the world that they may know peace. We pray to God, hear us, O God. Come to your children, where the lines are drawn between one ethnic group and another, between those who hold power and possessions and those who hold nothing. We pray to God, hear us, O God. In your spirit of healing and wholeness, redeem and transform our world. We pray that we may know you are with us always. We pray to God, hear us, O God. Come, Lord Jesus, not just to those we can see here in this comfortable place, but come to all your children. Find them in the dark corners. We pray to God. Hear us, O oh God. Teach us to love. Love so that our hands yearn to heal. Love so that our eyes yearn for holiness and beauty. Love so that our holy book's sacred words are always and forever on our lips. We pray to God. Hear us, O oh God. And God, if we forget to love this life that we have been given, if we forget to love the God of our people, the homeless and the stranger, the widow and the orphan, may the statutes of heaven remind us against a callous heart, against neglect, deceit, and contempt. We pray to God, hear us, O God. And now let us share aloud the names of those who are on our hearts today, all at the same time. Jasmine, Doug, Ellie, O oh, compassionate God, hear our prayers, answer them according to your will, and make us channels of your infinite grace. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. And let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And may we all experience peace and healing. response to God's abundant generosity and love, let us share our gifts as we are able by placing your gift in the offering plate at the back of the sanctuary or mailing a check to the church office or donating on the church's website.
when the storm clouds gather far across the sea, let us swear allegiance to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair. God, grant that our offerings may be symbols of our love and of ourselves, now offered more fully to you. Amen.
one another and for all people. May we take part in your work of suffering and redeeming love by lifting up the oppressed, binding the brokenhearted, challenging the powerful, and drawing all into a community of love. We pray in Christ's name. Thank you. 